Jump to it is no stranger to our Davos series. It's in the data management business, analyzing and reordering different silos of data to produce coherent conclusions. And in this difficult world, Jump to it wants to address the impact of geopolitics on decision making at the highest levels. I'm Andrew Wilson, and I'm in Davos to talk to founder and CEO Don Laker about what the right data can tell us. Don, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Good to see you. So we know Jump to it's in the data business. It's been a busy year. What are your priorities these days, and what are your priorities moving forward at the moment? We're very much focused on uh, improving scenario forecasting with artificial intelligence. Uh, and the idea really is to augment decision making and in that process, improve outcomes for stakeholders. Uh, we're living in a world right now with tremendous amount of instability. Uh, and this instability is contagious and you're seeing it proliferate around the world. And so we've been very much focused on identifying uh, the root causes of these events to understand uh, essentially the probabilities that events may occur and where they may spread. So with that use of artificial intelligence and with the recognition of, of this instability in different places and how it's connected, what conclusions are you starting to draw? That everything is related to everything else. So we know we've been able to see that the war, for example, uh, in, in Ukraine has had uh, has proliferated in terms of instability to other regions around the world. So that includes um, the, uh, the countries in the Sahel, so the, what's known as the coup belt. Uh, and so we've seen what happened in Niger and, and Gabon. And um, we have an election coming up in Senegal, which may be contentious as well, and other countries in that region. Uh, obviously, the conflict in Gaza. Uh, we've seen this proliferate now as far as Guyana, uh, where uh, Venezuela has made threatening statements and threatening moves there as well. And all of these things are related to each other. And, and so we're seeing that kind of causation. Uh, we're seeing, and we're seeing it from the standpoint of probabilities of events occurring. So we're able to essentially look at, look at the probable event and see who the likely participants are at a local level, at a regional level, and then a, a geostrategic level. So how are things changing? Because governments have always been doing this. They've always had their advisors, their state departments, their foreign offices that they've gone to and said, right, what are the signals coming from the international community? What are the geopolitics telling us? What's different from the skills that they deploy to what you're doing now at Jump To It? First, we focus on real-time data or near real-time data. We've established a global observation-based platform with global data nets around the world. So we're tracking every region in the world in real-time data or near real-time data and, and every sector in the world. So we're able to look at what is actually happening, take a cross-regional, cross-sector panoptic view, uh, a snapshot, if you will, as close to the actual state of present events, and from there, do our scenario forecasting on what the likely events will occur. Traditionally, people focus more on historical data. They go back further in time. We have the same number of increments, but our increments are in minutes, seconds, maybe hours, maybe days, not going back five or 10 years. We're looking as close, we're trying to get as close to the present as possible. And from that, we can see more accurately where things are likely to be heading, especially looking at the coalescing elements across sectors. So is that the Genesis system that you've deployed now? Yes. Very much focused also on neutral data. Um, we know we're, again, primarily observation-based and primary source data. So we remove the analysts from that process and just simply see the correlations of events and the probabilities that these types of events may occur at a future point in time. Uh, we look also, we also have proximity maps built into the platform. So we can see, cl we can see clusters of nations and clusters of, of, of interests uh, and we can see the movements dynamically as these nation states or other entities are moving closer together or further apart and perhaps moving towards another cluster of interests. And so we're able to see these. Essentially, the goal is to understand jurisdiction risk. All corporations uh, have a presence in, in jurisdictions. And, and so multinational companies have a presence in 
multiple jurisdictions, and certainly the, their suppliers have uh, a presence. And, and many of many multinational companies have suppliers all over the world. So any instability that we're able to detect at an intrastate level, uh, and we can detect these these types of uh, of instabilities, whether it's economic. Uh, whether it is factionalized types of conflicts uh, within countries, uh, we're able to detect, hey, this is perhaps a place where we're going to see that type of instability that could be disruptive to that company's production in that country, uh, disruptive to supply chains around the world, or it might be demand. Uh, you know, th th this might be a country that's importing a lot of products from other sources, and so demand will be impacted for other uh, in relation to the companies that are exporting to that country as well. So we're able to see those. And then we're able to see the interstate types of interactions that interface with those vulnerabilities, those, those points of instability uh, around the world. So it's, it's very much a complete view. And again, we're looking always at probabilities, correlations, probable causation, we're not focused on ideological constructs or belief systems or anything that would kind of impede that pure observation of an event. So in terms of data gathering, information gathering, you know, we see these systems like Google and all the rest of it that scrape sources from around the planet to come up with data. How does your system work? If you read the Financial Times, Bloomberg, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, BBC, and I read those every day, you get a very similar type of uh, themes and a lot of the same stories are prioritized and certain types of news and certain types of events around the world are not even reported or if they are, they're kind of on the back page metaphorically. Uh, but what we've built is the ability through our global data nets to pull data and information at a hyper localized level. So take the Middle East, for example, we're pulling from English sources, English speaking sources, or in Arabic or in Hebrew, and we translate using natural language processing, we run sentiment analysis on that, but we're able to aggregate this information and that becomes part of our analysis. And it's amazing, what I read every day is very different than what a lot of my colleagues read every day. I read everything that they read, but I also see <clears throat> what's happening at a very hyper-localized level for any region in the world. As a result, does your potential understanding of the big picture actually change? It has a profound effect on my understanding of global events and, and those of us who interact with Genesis and, and uh, jump to it in our systems. It alters our view of things. We see things that a lot of people aren't seeing yet. And a lot of policymakers are reading those primary sources as well. They're not getting this type of information aggregated. So they're missing a lot of those early types of variables and factors that could be the genesis of an event. So I'm a large institution and I'm considering becoming a client of yours. I've hired cyber experts, former intelligence officers perhaps, to give me briefs on, on geopolitical situations because all I'm looking for is a, a playing field that I can operate in that won't damage my interests. Um, what, have, what have you got that I haven't already got with all those skills I'm hiring in-house? So that skill set is only a small part of the skill set that's necessary to understand geopolitical events. So you have to look at, there are economic um, factors, there are military factors, there are diplomatic uh, types of factors, political factors, and there are alliances, there are adversaries, and then there are swing states in the world and how those interplay uh, with these types of conflicts, where the states that you don't know exactly where they're gonna stand or or they might make public statements in one respect, but in fact act in a different way or, or in ways that were unexpected based on the traditional views of how you look at things. So the forecasting has been very far off over the last few years. I mean, you know, we can look at the Ukraine war, we can look at the inability to see some of these events that, you know, gray zone events, uh, black swan events. And the signals are there, but it's more than signals. It's understanding the, uh, the cluster of of factors and variables across sectors to see those and collectively those elements become the probabilities and become, uh, you know, essentially the probable causation of an event happening. So final thought then, in terms of 2024 and beyond, what kind of product plans do you have and what sort of potential can we see coming out of Jump to it? So our approach 
to developing artificial intelligence is very different than a lot of the artificial intelligence that you see being publicized around uh, in the media. We're focused on scenario forecasting, improving scenario forecasting to augment that decision-making process in order to improve outcomes for people, for stakeholders. Um, ChatGPT and other types of AI are focused on basically uh, automating certain tasks that human beings have traditionally done in the past, also being type of this interactive system, uh, providing people with information. So our approach is very different. And we're utilizing AI in a very unique way. And so we will be rolling out very mature applications this year in various sectors, including finance, insurance, energy, critical minerals, health, and travel. And we think that these will be of great significance in terms of impacting the decision-making process and having a positive impact in this world. So there's a lot to look out for. Don, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Thank you.